G'day folks, I just thought I'd do a little update on the uh, turbo jet engine project. A few people asked about it in the last month, uh, along with the Westinghouse project, which is just a slow burner. I haven't done anything worth it, worthy of being reported on at the moment. But this one here, I just figured I'd spend the rainy afternoon and uh, do a bit more work on it. As you can see, it's mounted on a plate of a gasket goud and marked out the uh, inlet flange for the exhaust turbine because it's got a loop from the what's normally the inlet turbo straight around to the exhaust with a fuel injector and igniter on it. Um, I've got an oil fitting on there. I've got to make up an oil fitting there. I found these lines from the old Hyundai 1.8 litre engine. These are the fuel injection rail fittings but unfortunately that one's too fat. It doesn't fit in the hole. Bolt pattern's perfect but the oil, I can't use it as an oil return because it doesn't go in. Oh, well, that side does, but it's too small, unfortunately. Um, that, that one has a banjo bolt fitting and other stuff on it, so I might be able to use that. Uh, it's mounted on a one inch aluminum plate base. It's solid alley plate with some adjustable legs. I've had this plate for years. I just use it for setups and random jobs. I don't think I've ever really dragged it out on video, but it used to be an old, uh, I suppose you call it a sand casting mould die. You use it to form the sand into place. I guess I believe that's what it was. KTAR, N-O-M-P-L, something like that. I just bought it as scrap metal. I think it was $2 a kilo for the whole piece. So now it's going to be a turbo mount and I'm just currently making a exhaust flange to, or inlet flange for the exhaust turbine to bolt up to the blue the blue coated flange now, I don't know what steel I've got here but it's bloody tough stuff I'm guessing it's ASI 4140 judging by the way it cuts very hard to cut with a grinder very hot it still rusts it's not stainless but just the ping that it makes and the difficulty in drilling and cutting it and the amount of heat made by drilling and cutting it is just incredible. So I'm guessing it's ASI 4140, 4130 or some similar chrome molly steel. Uh, very good, but just difficult and very slow to machine. That's why it's taken so long to make this. I've tack welded it to a block of steel and I'm just boring it out so that I can cut it off weld the uh, loop tube to it. That's going to be the loop, like that. That'll weld onto there. Um, the round, round block won't be attached to it, of course, but it'll just bolt straight up to the uh, turbo housing, and that will have a flexi hose going to the uh, compressor turbine. This will be the compressor turbine, this will be the combustion turbine. So essentially what we'll have is that. If you can imagine a flexi hose or rigid and flexi hose going to the two with a fuel injector in there, like one of these. And yeah, it should work all right. We'll use a uh, regular EFI injector if I can. Just stick it in there, uh, find a place for the spark plug. I'm guessing just back here so combustion starts just before it gets to the turbine. I'll make a adjustment for the variable vanes. It's a Garrett variable vane turbocharger. Uh, it's meant for a turbo diesel but we'll see if we can make it work or at least melt it. I don't care if it melts, it cost me nothing. <laughs> Any free turbo is better than none. But yeah, she's a nice little unit. So that's what I'm up to at the moment with that one.
That should be a nice fit. It's a little bit loose, but that's good. I can you know, do a fill, fill it weld around the outside. About 0.1 over. Pretty easy. For a weld, weld job, it doesn't really matter if it's not a tight press fit or anything like that. Just want to fit the pipe into the onto the flange and just weld around it. I'll probably do that even before I cut it off this bushing. That way I can square the whole thing up. That should work quite well. You can see the uh, nice hard surface of this steel versus the grey, very grain or I suppose you call it brittle surface of this black, mild, hot rolled steel. This is obviously a cold rolled chrome molly plate or something like that. Probably probably is ASI 4140 or very similar. I have worked with 4140 before and it's pretty much got the same characteristics. The swarf doesn't chip. You don't get little crunchy chips coming off it. It always tries to turn into wire. Um, yeah, It's like turning stainless. Stainless has very very similar characteristics. It's just sticky and you get long strands of swarf rather than big chips unless you're taking a really deep fast cut in which case it does turn into tiny little chips but you need a lot more horsepower than this to do that I'd never be able to do it on this lathe, that belt would slip as it was it was already slipping making that wire so uh, yeah, next alright let's find some gaskets for this thing welding is a little more difficult than I expected but it worked it's just really thin tubing come out of a gas heater uh, I'm just going through my old gasket kits that one's important because it's for the Morris 1100 which I'll probably never get around to reassembling I need to buy some bottom end parts because it broke that bolt nah. so that's buried down the back of the shed under a heap of crap new proper kit though VRS kit and more Jag straight six VRS kit with head gasket and everything. That's kind of important. Yeah. That one there, it's a Chrysler outboard kit. At least what's left of it. Yeah, 75 to 140 horsepower, four cylinder, two stroke. But this one here is from some generic Mitsubishi Magna crap. So I think that might be what I want. Mm, a little bit too big. Yeah, I'll probably make that work. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll go to the um, exhaust or the intake side of the combustion turbine. Or better yet, we'll use that one. Just cut that down. Yeah, that works. Either way, generic old Magna gaskets are kind of useful. You can get the holes with them. <laughs> this is a Magna generic kit um, it covers TN to TZ Magna or whatever they call it various thermostat housing gaskets more holes um, various intake and exhaust gaskets even the outer cuts which are just spare gasket material it's all Fairly cheap. I think the whole set's probably like 80 or 100 bucks, if that. More housing gaskets. We're about 
almost ready to hook up the uh, compressor to the uh, combustion turbine and uh, yeah, start building a fuel pump which I sort of have there, I've got an SU um, gasoline pump from a Jaguar but it should work alright with Jet A if not I'll go high pressure and use a moderated or regulated power steering pump on a variable speed motor um, oil returns done, that's the fluid return from a Hyundai um, power steering pump I've just made a standoff bushing out of acetal well sorry not acetal, it's actually Teflon so Teflon bushing should stand up to the temperatures that this is going to get to it's not going to get burning hot but it will get very hot so acetal or polypropylene or anything like that would melt so PTFE is the best choice for that uh, oil inlet lines ready to go I just have to hook that up to a pump um, yeah definitely not going to run an air clean or anything like that that might choke it up You're just got to make a flange for this uh, compressor turbine and connect it straight up to here with a flexi hose fuel injectors in it's an old Toyota Camry 2. Point, I think it's about 2 or 2.2 .2 litre engine injector it's a 2 point atomizing injector so it'd probably be best to run very high pressure in it but you can't pulse it as such not with a jet engine you've got to either have it open or not so it's probably just going to pour fuel in and I'll use my pressure regulator to regulate how much fuel is going through it. The second spark plug is a bit of a mess up. I was originally going to have this combustion starting here and going through the turbine but I realised it's actually better to have it back here and combustion propagates through this tube and then drives the turbine. I mean I'm not running off any plans here. I'm not going to cheat and just download plans and do it according to what someone else has done. This is all my own R&D and playing around. And that's all this is, it's just playing around. If it doesn't work, you can go in the junk bin. That's all there is to it. If it blows the turbo up, well, at least I got some good use out of it. The turbo was a warranty, or a yeah, factory warranty repair on a Peugeot or something like that. Two litre Peugeot diesel. So, uh, yeah, turbo's been written off. Might as well do something fun with it.